I'm a native of Hibbing, Minnesota, and um, I've been pursuing a career in acting and filmmaking uh, professionally now for about 14 years. Uh, and I've gotten to a point in my career where I wanted to start making stories about northern Minnesota because I'm, uh, you know, I'm from here. I, I have a lot of experiences here. Um, there are a lot of things about the Minnesota lifestyle and culture that I find very fascinating. Uh, and things that I think other people would find fascinating too if they were only in movies. So, um, <laughs> so that's kind of what this this uh, first project is about. It's called Pollywogs. It's uh, the coming home story about a guy who, on the heels of a bitter breakup, comes home to Minnesota for a family reunion, and while he's here, he runs into his childhood best friend and first love, who he hasn't seen for 18 years since uh, her family moved to go live on a religious compound. It's, it sounds um, it's so uh... sort of a <laughs> it sounds What's a little. It's, I was going to say it sounds a little bit. Um, there, there does tend to be that. Um, you know, and like me, I've done a lot of men's work and stuff. There tends to be that. They, some people even call her like the phantom lover. This is this girl that you're. You know, a, a boy is maybe nine or ten years old and just like falls deeply in love with in a different way than they fall in love with any other person, if that even is love. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the part that is fascinating to me. You know, and I think it's something that, at least, if not young men al uh, alone, but young men and women, you know, everyone has this moment of first love. And, you know, I was fascinated with the idea of, of you know, being so fixated on that moment because you weren't allowed to sort of, you know, spend more time with this person that it sort of prevents you from going on with, with the rest of your life in a way that, uh, you know, puts you, you know, perhaps in patterns of, of uh, relationships that uh, you're constantly trying to compare to this, you know, first love from when you're, when you're 10 years old. That's sort of where the story came from and it sort of blossomed into this bigger, bigger story, not only about that, but about sort of uh, life on the Iron Range and, and what it means to be, you know, grow up in, in a, in a place that has so much water, uh, you know, and so much life. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota is a huge character in the movie, which is something that I really wanted to do. And, um, and I cast my, my actual family in it as the family at the family reunion. So it was, um, it was kind of a fun experience to bring some actors from New York and plop them into the middle of my actual family reunion uh, <laughs> so and shoot during that process. You're... Um... We have about three minutes, so I just want to I want to make sure we're, we're mindful of the time. So the um, okay. um, the family is in the movie. There's uh, I, I saw the trailer. I didn't post um, the trailer on the Facebook page because I see there's a little skin there, and so I didn't know if that was for everybody. So I post uh, I put a picture there, and then I put a link to your website if people want to take a look at that. Um, but, uh, you have local people on there and then, um, the, it seems like this, uh, love interest really, I mean, I don't know if she's well cast or not, but she is like compellingly beautiful. And it seems like someone that, you know, you can, even <laughs> in the trailer, you can see some of that connection. Oh yeah. Uh, her name is Kate Scheel, Caitlin Scheel. And, uh, she's, she's a remar remarkable actress. She's done a lot of independent films in the last few years and, uh, her career is really starting to take off now. Uh, you're going to start seeing her on some TV shows and um, and in some bigger movies, uh, which is you know really exciting for us. I mean, she's she's a great talent, um, and yeah, you're right. She's she's definitely captivating, and uh, I think she was well cast. I had her in mind for the role as I was uh, writing the movie, um, so I was really thrilled when she said yes. And uh, the movie has its. You had your uh, your national debut in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Film Festival, and then the local uh, debut is tonight at the Cinema in downtown Duluth. Yeah, yeah. I just got back from Los Angeles. Actually, we had an amazing screening out there at uh, Los Angeles Film Festival. It was two sold out screenings, which was awesome. They were, you know, big two hundred seat theaters. Uh, lots of good questions were asked afterward, and. Um, really excited to be screening it in Duluth because, you know, this is, it's nearby where we shot. We shot about an hour from here. Um, I'm in Duluth right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm really looking forward to showing this to a Minnesota audience. It's going to be the first time a, a group of Minnesotans have seen it. So um, we're going to hang out afterward and do a QA. and a And this is down at the Zinema uh, in downtown Duluth. All right. uh, and then we'll be hanging out at the, at, at the, uh, 
you know, restaurant afterward too that's connected to the and theater. So, people and people, hang people out can and meet you them. and talk to you and hang out with you. That's great. Hey, Carl, I've got yeah, a, totally. I've, I've got a couple more questions for you. I'm going to keep you on hold during the news here, and uh, okay, and uh, we're going to do some recording, and we'll, we'll, maybe we'll post it online later. Uh, so just hold the line. Carl uh, Jacob, uh, local uh, boy filmmaker, his uh, film Polywog has his local debut at the Cinema in Duluth um, later today. It's 11 o'clock. You're listening to WGZS Cloquet. NSA leaker Edward Snowden apparently is having trouble. So what I wanted to ask you about was uh, what it was like um, having this uh, kind of clash of cultures with your family and the actors and other folks, you know, the other crew and all the folks that came in to help make this movie with you. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was as much of a clash as it was sort of a, a really good symbiosis. Um, okay. I Well, the actors, the actors and I worked for six months rehearsing before they came here. Because we had a script, but it was really just a 30-page outline, and all the dialogue in the movie is improvised. Um, and the reason I did that was because I wanted them to be able to exist within this family reunion and be able to answer questions without thinking about them very quickly and do it in a way that made it feel like they actually did live in Minnesota. So we spent we spent six solid months really rehearsing and, and getting them uh to, you know, research the Minnesota lifestyle and what it's like to live here. You know, I, I had I had them all pick out houses that they live in in, in different parts of the of the state and um and uh <laughs> by the time we got here, um it actually they slipped right in and, you know, the lifestyles that we have sometimes are very chaotic and we spend a lot of time in big cities. So just the fact that we were shooting on this beautiful lake, you know, in in the middle of, of Minnesota in a beautiful time of year, what, you know, made everyone in a great mood in addition to, you know, wanting to make the movie. They, they also came to sort of get away from the chaos of sort of, you know, the lifestyle of being a filmmaker and an actor. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it was really a clash at all. In fact, uh, my family really enjoyed seeing, uh, you know, this, this type of work because it's not something that they get to experience every day. So being able to participate in in it in a real way and um, and be able to, you know, help out. Like, I couldn't have done it without the support of the community. Um, people cooked food for us. Uh, every day we had food. We constantly had, you know, like cookies and stuff coming to set too and people stopping by to sort of bring gifts and, and, and just offer their support any way they could. People volunteering their time to help out um, as we were shooting. Um, so, yeah, I, I, think, I think it was a great learning experience for for both parties, both sides. For one, sure. of, one of the things that I like to talk to artists about is, you know, we're, an, we're a public educational radio station. We're a Native American owned radio station. And one of the things that we, you know, I'm right, my, our studios are right in the heart of a uh, K-12 school. And I think about young people who have dreams and desires to do something and to um, follow a passion, even if that passion might lead them far away or lead them into, you know, needing to learn um, a new business, you know, or kind of a new industry or, or, or whatever it may be. Could you talk about your experience growing up in this region and how you were able to, um, you know, follow, push yourself to follow that dream or, or what happened? Sure. Um I think uh, northern Minnesota, well, Minnesota in general, I think, is m very supportive of the arts in a lot of ways that maybe some other states aren't. So I think when I was growing up, at least, I, I had outlets. We had, a, we had a community theater program that I started working in when I was, you know, nine or ten years old, maybe 11 years old, something like that. Um, so... I really had the, the support of the community in terms of like being able to feed that desire of wanting to do that. Um, I think maybe that's changed now, or I'm not really sure, uh, because um, I haven't been spending as much time in Minnesota uh, in the past, you know, 10 years. This last year I have. I've been spending a lot of time here just because I've been, uh, you know, researching and, and wanting to make more films here and sort of thinking about giving back and, and fostering uh, a new generation of people who are interested in making films and interested in 
you know, getting into the arts because I do think it's really an important thing to have as part of as part of your life. I mean, it's it's just as important as anything else to to you know keep your soul fed and and you know keep your keep yourself happy in in a real way. Um, I definitely do think it was also challenging as a kid to not have as many opportunities just because it's not, you know, Northern Minnesota is not necessarily a mecca for the entertainment industry. So there's obviously a lot more resources in bigger cities and, and on the coasts. Um, but there's also uh, something very special and unique about uh, you know, existing in northern Minnesota as an artist, which is one of the reasons why I've come back here now after sort of getting the perspective that I gained by living in, in New York and Los Angeles. It's um, sort of a refreshing look and a little more critical eye, maybe, of, of what it's like to live up here, um, just because I'm not so entrenched in it that I'm, uh, I don't take things for granted. You know, like I find things refreshing because because maybe not that maybe they're not new but they're new enough that i'm able to sort of you know focus on them as an idea uh, and that idea will turn into a story and that story will turn into a movie so um in terms of how uh you know young kids today can can follow their passions i guess i guess you know knowing not knowing what you want is fine <laughs> And that, that's advice I like to give to people. It, you know, it doesn't really matter if you don't know what you want to do. You know, follow, follow your gut and, and, you know, think on your toes. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, just be careful. And, uh, and you can you, and meet people, you know. No, no person is an island. Like, you can't do anything without the support of community. You know, find like-minded people to hang out and talk to, uh, you know. And that's one of the reasons why I'm, I want to you know, show my film out here and, and, and do this kind of, uh, it's not necessarily outreach. It's just sort of, uh, spreading the word and, and showing people what you can do with very little with, with an idea and with a passion and, and with a group of friends that you really trust. You know, that's, I guess that's one of the main reasons I want people to come to the screening is, is for that time to just sort of hang out and talk about the experience of, of, of being an artist. So I have another film uh, oriented question for you, and like I said, I haven't I haven't seen the movie yet. Um, I had a chance to watch the trailer and uh, watch some of the production, you know, see some of the stills and other things. Um, this area really is beautiful, by the way, incidentally, isn't it? I mean, is, it, that's not just us. Oh yeah, that. yeah. That one still uh, that that we have, where it's the main character standing on the dock. And it's like all of the trees are changing colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not everyone. <laughs> so gorgeous. Yeah, not everyone gets that. So um, about, I guess it's getting to twenty years now. The, you know, the, maybe the biggest movie that I can think of that was made in Minnesota or around Minnesota was Fargo with the Coen Brothers and won tons of awards and was uh, yeah um, put us you know on a on a certain stage. Local people have had some degree of backlash around the the portrayal and you know the accent which i come down as the <laughs> Cohen, you know uh francis mcdormand got the accent right because we have different accents and you growing up in hibbing maybe have your own opinions about that but it seems to me that um there are you know there are linguistic features and uh and issues and local people in particular will just harpoon someone if uh they think it's not being taken seriously i wonder how you handled not not necessarily just the language issue but of course i want to hear about that but also the you know the 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 way that things are for, for certain people particularly on the iron range yeah well you know i think i think first of all no matter what you do you're, there's always going to be people who don't like what you're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's definitely unavoidable. And, and in the case with Fargo, like, yeah, I can understand how, you know, when, when you live in the culture, you don't, you don't necessarily recognize, you know, how, how affected your language is. Um, but I, I think this is all just details. And, yeah, I've, I've participated in conversations about the outrage of the accent, um, which will probably be refreshed now that Fargo's <laughs> being made into a series. I don't know if you know about oh, this. We're casting it right now. <laughs> There's going to be a TV series called Fargo based on the movie, and mm -hmm. it's, it's in pre-production right now. It's just kind of funny. Um, 
So in terms of the way that I dealt with this, I mean, I, I know that there are probably people who, uh, you know, aren't going to like the, the film and, and hopefully there are more people who like it, but that's just a risk that you take as, as an artist and, and as, as a businessman, as, as anything really, like no one's going to like everything that you're doing. Um, in terms of addressing the accent specifically, I left it up to the actors to, to do whatever they wanted to with the accent. Um, just because I didn't think it was that important. In Fargo, it was important, I think, because it was, you know, the Coen brothers have a, a stylistic approach to making their movies where they want things to stylistically fit within, you know, this sort of container of being uh, hyper real, you know? So I think that's part of that movie is the fact that it's it's not it's not really meant to feel that real. There's definitely an edge that they're pushing there that takes it just away from reality a little bit. Whereas my movie, Polylogs, um, is not like that at all. My movie is exactly the opposite. It's supernatural. It's <laughs> supernatural meaning it's very natural, not meaning they're good. Oh, okay. But, I was <laughs> like, I knew there was yeah, a spiritual is, angle with the girl going off to the religious compound. Yeah, no, 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 no. Sorry. I, <laughs> uh, very, very natural. Uh, it's a naturalistic, realistic approach. You know, we use natural light for most of the movie. Like 90% of the movie is all done with, with practical light and with sunlight. You know, the film is shot kind of documentary style. It's improvised dialogue. So, um, I didn't want people to be thinking about the accents, and we got the accents from my family, you know, just because they have them. Uh -huh. So they didn't need to try, and and that, and I liked that being the cultural snapshot of the movie, accent wise. Like I didn't really care if it came through or not, but it did end up coming through, especially with with my family members who are just talking the way that they always talk. So I guess I didn't need to really address that specifically. Um, was that your full question? I feel like there was something else that you asked in there well, as well. Well, there's there is a question about that actually was one I was going to drill down deeper on this. And this one again, I'm I'm putting you on the spot. This is our first conversation we've had. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know how well you can address this. But we will often hear um, people talk about Northern Minnesota as it's all white. You know, everyone is white. But knowing a little bit about some of the nuances of the Iron Range, um, we know living here that people come from many, came from many different places to this area. And of course, there's a significant Native American population in the area as sure. well. And so I'm wondering how um, you address that issue of really, it's not all one culture, but to some, you know, to sort of the people who use words like flyover territory. It may seem like everything's the same, but it's much more. There are much more subtle differences. They're powerful, and there can be some serious, very strong bonds and serious, very strong disconnects between cultures as well. Yeah, um, I, Hollywogs itself doesn't necessarily address any of those issues in terms of. You know, um, I guess the storyline didn't have any room for that. It was such a small story, and okay. it took place in the middle of this family, and it's pretty much all in one location. Like, there's, there's only one other location, or two other locations. There's a cliff jumping scene that wasn't at the cabin, and then there was a, a scene where um, they go to just a store to, like, buy some milk, and it's very quick. Um, <laughs> what store did you go so, to? Yeah, in for the location, uh, just out of curiosity, is it? Yeah, it's the, it's a I, it's a Fred's grocery store in in Goodland, Minnesota. <laughs> okay, that'll be that'll be um, famous. That's going to be famous. Yeah, for exactly. <laughs> so, it, in terms of like being able to spotlight any kind of ethnic diversity, it, we didn't really have any room for it in the story. Mm -hmm. So it, it didn't really come up. Just because it wasn't, you know, it didn't present itself. So, um, really, the, the main character is, is, is the environment, uh, other, other, than, other than the family. You've got the, the four main characters who, who exist inside of this, this very close-knit family, and then you have 
the beauty of yeah. of the region. And those are kind of the two big character themes in the movie, you know. So um, there wasn't really room for anything outside of that. I mean, not, not even... Not, not even to address the differences in, in the people who are, are at the event, but they're all related, you know, so it's, it was kind of tough it sounds like it's, that. It sounds like you really are touching on some kind of universal themes and also the kind of like the Phoenix type of a thing where he's yeah. reorganizing you know, and, his and, life. And, and, that's, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a movie that anybody could go see and could relate to. You know, it doesn't matter if you're white. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, Native American. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because everyone has had this experience of meeting, meeting someone and having that first moment where you're like, wow, I really love this person, mm-hmm. you know, and this person is not related to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love this person in a different way than I love my mother, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and I hope that that universal theme comes through and I, I hope that, and I think it does, and I think we saw that in the screenings in Los Angeles, that all, all people of all shapes and sizes and colors were there, and they all enjoyed it, and they all had great things to say about it. So hopefully that alone will, will you know, bridge, bridge any sort of, you know, cultural disparity that people might be experiencing. Maybe this movie will help, you know, start new conversations with people who may not have otherwise spoken just because they all wanted to go see this movie and they happen to sit next to each other, you know? That's that's the kind of thing that I like to cultivate. Oh, you like the you like the I've often wondered that because, you know, there'll be the conversation in the car with your date or with your buddies or whoever it is that you're with or you know, you uh um as a filmmaker, that has to ha- be something that you're curious about what the conversation is when people go to grab the coffee or, or, or whatever, whatever it is afterwards or as they're heading home, what were the impressions? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I often feel when I leave a movie that I feel frustrated when I don't have someone to talk to about it afterward, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I love, I love creating an environment where that can be made possible, you know, where, where people can hang out and, and, they don't even need to talk about the movie. They can talk about anything they want to. They can talk about, you know, ideas and feelings that they had when, when they were watching the movie, and they don't even necessarily need to make sense in context of the film, and that's fine for me, you know, as long as they're talking, as long as people are talking to each other and having some kind of experience that, you know, even if they hate the movie, maybe two people hated the movie, and together they love talking about why they hate it, you know. To me, that's just as much of a success as as someone, you know, praising the movie personally. <laughs> yeah. So, and speaking yeah. of that, uh, there is the showing at uh, the Zeitgeist um, Theater. It's in downtown Duluth. And uh, you're going to be sticking around afterwards to talk with people, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. And you have, uh, you sent me a message here that it will be in the Twin Cities Film Festival in October. Yeah, October 26th which I believe is a Saturday, we'll be having our official Minnesota premiere. The, the, the screening up here is, is more of a, a local screening uh, to sort of bring the film to the community that supported it. But the official you know, Minnesota regional premiere is going to be at the uh, Twin Cities Film Fest in October. With a small, and I mean small in terms of not you know, produced by Paramount or MGM, with a small movie like this, um, it seems to me, it sounds a little bit like a lot of, a huge amount of the work is after the movie is all together and it's all cut and it's all, you know, the titles and everything are in place and it's, and it's marketing it and sharing it and getting it um, entered into festivals and, and things like that. Um, am, I, am, I hitting, am I anywhere near reality with that assessment? Oh, yeah, especially nowadays. The... Every, the, the, the entire process from the idea down to the, the screenings, uh, the whole thing. It used to be that you would take it up to a point and then you would find you know, a distributor who would help you sort of take it, take it beyond that point. Um, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of, there was a lot of money available for, for that sort of mechanism to, to happen. And there were, 
a lot fewer places to watch movies. You know, you watched them in theaters or they were on TV. Like, those were kind of the options. And then there were VHS and then there was DVD and that was kind of it. And now with via, with video on demand and with, you know, Netflix and and the internet at large, you know, in general, it's, it's just, um, it's a much more complex place to navigate and it's, you know, it's easier to share media. So it's, it's much harder to make money, which is, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, but it makes it more challenging to figure out how we're going to keep making these stories, you know? So, um, so yeah, if you, if you really want to, to, uh, see your movie, uh, get the exposure that it, it deserves, oftentimes you need to do a lot of that work yourself now. Um, which is a little, a little bit different. I mean, there's always been an element of needing to do that, but it's, it's definitely changed in the last 10 years for sure. So, yeah, so, there's uh, a lot of work that needs to happen. I mean, any... I'm working right now, right? <laughs> you, are, you are working, and I appreciate your time. So um, what, yeah. else are, what else is in the works? What else, uh, where, where else is this film headed, and are there other ways that people, I mean, is there a DVD coming out? Is there people, can people pay-per-view online, or how, how, how else can people experience this if they can't make it? To the cinema, and maybe they don't want to wait till October to watch it. Yeah, um, the other ways that the best way to find out how to see it is to just go to polywogsmovie dot com and sign up for the mailing list because okay. uh, that's where we make our our announcements and um, give our first offers for for the film. Um, people can actually uh, pledge support. For the, for the distribution process right now on the website. And if you do that, um, you'll be, uh, if you do it at a certain funding level, I can't remember which level it is, but if you donate a certain amount of money right now to the project, you actually get a free digital copy of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's free. I mean, you've donated, so you've, you've paid for it. But, uh, it's a thank you. Wh- whoever does the early support right now online for distribution, um, will get will be the first people to have uh, digital copies of the movie available to them. Carl, I want to so, thank. Um, yeah, no, was there yeah, yeah. one more thing you wanted to say? No, that's it. That's okay. it. Okay, so um, Carl, I want to thank you so much um, for talking with us and for taking a few extra minutes to talk with us for this sort of uh, web version of the conversation. And um, yeah, look, no problem. Look forward to um, hearing more about what you're doing and how things are going. Um, and hear more about this film. And please keep, uh, you have our contact information, please keep us in mind when you have other things that, uh, that you're doing. Oh, that, was, that's, that is one more question I wanted to ask you before we go. What is next for you? I, I mean, I'm, I'm always open to, to all kinds of work. Um, right now I am in development on a documentary film uh, that I'm probably going to shoot in the fall. Uh, where I'm going to follow my dad and his best friend on their uh, annual pilgrimage to the Colorado Rockies when they go uh, seek out and uh, hunt an elk with a bow. Really? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's one film I have in the works. And then there's um, there's a series that I'm I'm in like pre development on some ideas. So you're uh, are you moving more into being a producer now? I mean, I, I think I've always, you kind of need to be a producer if you want to get anything done. I mean, I have a producing team. I didn't do it by myself. There, there were six producers on this movie. So I'm, I'm one of the six producers on the movie. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, anytime you have a project like this that, you know, is, is primarily your story, you're going to be a producer on it just because you know what you want to get and you know what kind of team you want to assemble. So um, but I, I produce, I, I direct, I act, you know, I, I do, I do it all and I love it all. So I, I just do whatever it takes to, to keep telling stories and to, you know, keep myself happy. Carl, thanks again so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. Have a great day. You too. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, 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 well, u